Hey everybody, Cody and Allison here with the first video in our Proto Experiment Series, where we're going to take the basic concepts of Grade 1 Science and apply them to our custom manufacturing in order to solve a common engineering question. Today we're going to try experimenting with custom watertight enclosures. We're going to start off by forming a hypothesis surrounding the question of which manufacturing technique should be used to achieve a fully submersible watertight enclosure. We're also going to be keeping in mind budgets, so we're looking to find out which technique would also be the most economical. So based on our knowledge of sheet metal internally and information from many industry experts and suppliers, this is our hypothesis. If we use a watertight heavy duty custom die cast enclosure, then it will provide the best results cost effectively for achieving watertight capabilities. We want everyone to keep in mind that this experiment is not going to be the de facto answer. However, we wanted to have a little fun with this question and try it out for ourselves. So for this experiment, we will be testing the following manufactured enclosures. The first one is a five-sided sheet metal enclosure made with 5052 aluminum and has no finish. Uh, the second enclosure is a five-sided sheet metal enclosure made with 5052 aluminum with a heavier gauge cover and has no finish. The enclosure has fully seam welded corners, a neoprene rubber gasket for the cover, and uses ceiling screws. Next, we have a five-sided watertight heavy-duty die-cast enclosure with an O-ring gasket and heavy-duty screws. Finally, we have a custom CNC machine enclosure that has a 5052 aluminum cover and a 6061 aluminum base with EDPM rubber O-ring gasket for the cover and ceiling screws. So what is going to be our testing method? Um, we're going to take each one of these enclosures and submerge them in a tub of water for 10 minutes each. There's going to be a camera on the inside of each enclosure focusing on pH paper, which will be our measurement tool that shows how much water is inside of each enclosure. This paper will change color once it detects liquid. So visually, we may be able to classify certain failing manufacturing techniques as busted if the enclosure becomes submerged with water entirely. A few things to note, we're going to say again, do not take this as the de facto answer as to which enclosure is going to provide you with specific NEMA results. If your application requires specific NEMA requirements, we recommend that you do these tests yourself as we can build to NEMA spec but cannot execute the NEMA testing in-house. So let's go experiment. So guys, the first one we're going to submerge is our five-sided sheet metal enclosure that does not have a gasket, welded corners, or ceiling screws into tub number one. See that one is immediately filling up with water. Oh yeah, lots of bubbles. So now we're going to submerge our five-sided sheet metal enclosure that has seam welds, a gasket, and ceiling screws in tub number two. Perfect, not a lot going on in there. Okay, so next we're going to submerge our five-sided watertight heavy-duty die-cast enclosure which has an o-ring gasket and heavy-duty ceiling screws in tub number three. Couple bubbles coming up. Alright, so next, finally, we have our CNC machined enclosure which has an o-ring gasket So now we're going to leave these in here for 10 minutes and then after that we'll take them out, open them up and see if there's a color in the uh, pH paper. All right, so 10 minutes passed. We took all the enclosures out. 
you removed all the lids. Let's talk through what happened. Sure. So the first one here that we put in, um, the five-sided enclosure with no welded seams or gaskets or anything like that, this one kind of filled up right away. You could hear the bubbles just immediately uh, escaping the enclosure. Um, when we took the lid off, it was, you know, filled to the top with water. So we expected that to happen. Um, the second one we put in uh, fared out pretty well. This is the five-sided enclosure with the welded seams, uh, the gasket, and the ceiling screws. Um, they held up really well when we put it in. There was a few little bubbles coming out, but I think it was just kind of the air releasing from the compression on the, uh, on the gasket. Right. So this one, uh, this one stayed, stayed completely dry. Awesome. Um, the next one, the die cast, did very well as well. Now these are designed to be watertight, so we fully expected this to stay dry. Um, it has a little bit of a groove on it that kind of forces itself into a, uh, an O-ring on the cover, so that makes a really good seal on these. Um, now the CNC one we designed and milled ourselves. This one has an O-ring gasket as well, and with the compression of the cover, this one managed to stay completely dry too, so we were happy to see that. Okay, so at the top of the video, we mentioned cost effectiveness. Let's take a look at the quantity one pricing for each of these types of enclosures. So after revisiting our hypothesis, we can clearly see that a custom watertight, heavy duty die cast enclosure will provide sufficient resistance to liquid when being submerged. And will also be the most economical option as this particular test enclosure costs the least without any custom hole cutouts. Now keep in mind that these tests would be much different once we have custom cutouts and NEMA rated connectors in them. As well, we wouldn't necessarily get the same result for spray testing, so stay tuned. We're going to try doing a proto experiment spray test for these enclosures in the future. So that concludes this proto experiment. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you found it helpful and a bit informative. Uh, comment below, let us know what other proto experiments you want to see. Thanks, guys.